Hello everybody, this is Sense Winterhurst, owner of Atticus Tech, and this is the first video of a soon-to-be collection of videos that will most likely help people learn how to script. In this video, um, I will be discussing variables, um, defining them, showing you how they work, showing you how to declare them, and use them, even using them in this script here, you know, so we can make this even more awesome. Um, and I hope you learn something from these videos, that's the point of it. Um, if you have any questions or anything, just submit a comment or um, instant message me in world, and I will get back to you. I hope you enjoy. Place that stores information in a script. Uh, creating a variable would be more commonly known as finding a variable. And they can be a string, an integer, a float, a vector, a rotation, a key, or a list. Uh, let's first start off with strings, okay? Strings are basically a sequence of characters or text, limited in length depending on the available memory in a script. Um, sc strings are always enclosed in a quotation mark when you're defining them. Uh, integers are whole numbers, or whole values, and can also be entered in a uh, hexadecimal, but we'll tackle that later because it's really complicated. Well, not complicated, but more advanced. Uh, floats can hold whole numbers, but also numbers with remainders. Like if you were to type 6 divided by 5 and you would see 1.2, that would be a float. Um, vectors are basically three floats used together usually representing a direction or a coordinate or magnitude which are formatted as XYZ. I'll show you that later. Uh, rotations are like vectors except they consist of four floats used together and is formed in XYZS. Keys are special strings. Uh, they are the unique identifier that can be used to reference objects, inventory items, agents, textures, etc. But we all refer to this as e UUIDs. Lists are exactly as it sounds. They consist of other data types and are created via comma separated values, CSV, which are all enclosed by um, brackets. Lists can contain all the above data as well. Okay, so let's start off with showing you how strings work. Now, first, when you need, when you want to define a string, um, you have to add the, sh the name that you're defining. So, we'll put string. Okay, that's the first step. Pretty easy, huh? Now, what you got to do is just add a name. Pretty easy as well. So, we'll put this as test string. And then, if you want to add a value to it, we'll add a value to it up here add a equal sign, then add some quotations, we'll put in test string, and add a semicolon, okay, and that's it. If you wanted to define, no, that's right there is a global variable, that means it's going to work throughout the whole entire script, but if you only want a variable to be used like in a certain event, which would be this or this, all you'd have to do is just put string locale string equals laugh out loud. Okay. Now that string would only be used in that event, okay? So this wouldn't know what that string is and anything else, okay? Um next one we're gonna do is an integer. Okay, so once again, integer test integer equals and then put a number so we'll put a uh, 53 okay now that's a global variable once again so any script in here would be easily would can easily get that um integer okay next one would be a float so once again float test float So, 4.512. That's a float. I mean, this is, I mean, this declining variables is pretty easy, okay? This is probably going to be the 
easiest video that I could have made. Um, and for you to learn. Let's do a vector now. A vector, uh, test vector. And for vectors, you could either, there's two ways you could actually do these, alright? So you could have, like, uh, 4, and then 5.82, or, and then, as a Z, 65, okay? So that's a vector right there. But, there's a really cool thing you could do, too. Like, if you wanted to combine a f float that you've already declared, which would be up here, into this vector. Okay, so we'll do that. Now this is another way you could also define a uh, vector, okay? You see this test float right here? That's a test float from all the way up here. And that would be used inside of this. And that's pretty neat, huh? And let's go to rotations. So rotation, test, rotation. Um, now here you just use numbers like you would in float, <coughs> like you would in a vector, except you'd have to add one more uh, space. Okay, so we'll put 53. Okay. Uh, let's do a key now. Okay. Now keys, um, they're usually like avatars stuff like that, so we'll just, we're actually just going to leave this blank. But we're just going to put a test key. We'll leave that blank. Okay, just add a semicolon there and just end it. Alright? And the last one is uh, list. So we'll put list, test, list. Okay? Now in list, if you want to add items to it, you can add it global, uh, globally or locally. Okay? I'll show you globally first. Okay? <clears throat> so let's put an equal sign. Then we're going to put our brackets. Okay? Uh, now within the, these brackets, are, um, these are going to be our, this is going to be a list, okay? So let's first put um, test string in there. Add a comma, test integer, add a comma, test float, add a comma, test vector. And we'll leave it like that for now, okay? Because I'm going to show you a cool thing you can do. So, let's go back to the state en entry uh, event, and let's take a look at our test list. Now, because it was defined uh, globally, any s event would be able to recognize this uh, variable. But let's say you want to add a variable, okay? Well, all you need to do is just have a plus equal sign, and then add the tell it what you want to add, and this would be added to the end of the script. So let's say you wanted to add test rotation, and then test rotation, which is all the way up here, will be added in here once it hits state entry. Okay? Now, of course, click save, that's where you add everything. It tells you if it compiles or not. And if it gives you any errors, make sure that you included these semicolons in here, okay? Because these semicolons, I mean, even the best scripters can even forget a semicolon once in a while. And then they're all like, oh my god, what happened? Okay, but those semicolons need to be there so everything can work out, okay? So these are all your variables that you can use in scripts, okay? And variables are also so seen in events such as touch start, integer, no, I'm detected, okay? This right here would be a variable that would be detected from touch start. Um, if you ever wanted to have a script, have an object uh, say or shout or whisper like a variable, all you'd have to do is something like this. Now, since LLSay uh, uses strings, it's a string message. Uh, if you ever wanted to like have it say an integer, like test integer, that would that wouldn't work out because an integer and a string are two different things. 
Therefore, you have to convert it, okay? And to convert things, you just do something like that, okay? So you put a you put string in the middle of two parentheses, okay? And that would convert this test integer into a string. But that would only be done, you know, within that little function. Function, okay? That wouldn't work out through the through the whole entire thing. And uh, that's basically it with variables. Um, next, we're gonna tackle uh, events, and then functions and uh, states. So I hope you enjoyed.